Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So I got a question for you. What are you thinking? Well, seriously, exactly. What are you thinking? Because what you think becomes your reality. And that's been proven by many in the scientific world and then some. We're going to talk about manifesting your dreams and the power of what we think becoming our reality. When you think about that, it's a little unnerving, a little scary, considering some of the thoughts we have (laughs) from minute to minute, hour by hour, day by day. She's a visionary creation coach. She's Ronnie Holney, and she's back with us. Hey, Ronnie, how you doing? I am fabulous, Steve. So we've talked before about using your techniques with a vision board and journaling. And we, we're going to circle back to that at some point. I want to talk about what we think about and how that has such an impact. And by the way, even before we get there, if you want to reach out, you have a question for Ronnie, 631-438-1576 or instant feedback. And you can do instant feedback, Steve, at gmail.com. The power of the thought. It's, it is a thing, isn't it? It very much is. It very much is. You know, I don't know if people understand, but there are three there are three parts to, to conscious thinking. There's a consciousness, which is your logical, objective, reasoning, thinking mind, which what we use every day, all day. But then there's the subconscious, which is the subjective mind, and it goes off uh, based uh, it's go off logic and beliefs that we are learned and it's expressed then that expresses those thoughts and logics to our conscious mind and then there's the super conscious which i strive for every day <laughs> and the super conscious is basically if you want to call it source it's the universal mind it's infinity intelligence it's god's mind it's what we're born with before we're even born. It's there. So there are the three types of conscious thinking and conscious thought. I don't know if you knew that. I've heard that term before, super conscious. Okay. Never really had yeah. it, you know, deeper, deeper explanation for it. Can we go a little bit deeper? Like what is actually going on there? Yeah. Okay. So before we're even born, we have a super conscious, which is our God creation, it is, and God puts it there when we're born, or before we're born, when we're created. And what that does is it keeps us connected to Him, and it gives us the ultimate infinity ability to think intelligently and help influence our thoughts to gain the absolute abundance that God wants us to have. So our super conscious, it's the most powerful place we can be, and it's our highest self. So we get there by going into deep meditation, visualization, sorry about that, and being aligned to those thoughts, feelings, and visualizations. Do you feel that that super conscious aspect of us was put there as our GPS, We don't even know we're using it, but it's there. Yes. And and, and that's the superconscious is kind of the hardest place for humans, as humans, to get to because we're so influenced by our reality, our physical reality, and beliefs that are, you know, put into our minds as we grow up. So we kind of lose the connection, our, our God source connection, we kind of get lost in that. We don't lose it, we get lost in it. Um, Nicholas Tesla was oh. huge, and Albert Einstein were huge on, they thought they were taking, you know, they, I read articles about these guys um, recently, and they talk about them taking, everybody thought they were taking these, these power naps, but they had taught themselves how to go into such a deep meditation that it looked like they were sleeping, and that's where they tapped into the superconscious 
and were able to develop all these amazing things. So they tapped into their God source and was given the, the, the information they were looking for. Wow. Uh, I've been studying Tesla and mm -hmm. have, have read many of the same things. He was a little quirky. Uh, he did some interesting things, like he would <laughs> he would um, curl his toes in his shoes like a thousand times a day. Just keep doing it, keep doing it. Uh, he had a a relationship with the pigeons outside of his uh, place in New York City. Just that was that; those were his friends. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but he was a genius with hundreds of patents, and he he aced this thing called manifestation. And and I truly believe that's how it all came about. There was no electricity. He he manifested it. Right. It came about, and uh, and that there mm -hmm. it began. The engine, the motor, call it the motor that's in your vacuum cleaner that uh, drives our cars. That came from him, and on and on and on. So yeah, and even to go deeper, and there, there's a book I I'm still I need to get to it. And it's been sitting in my, uh, it should manifest reading it. Maybe I will get to it sooner. Uh, <laughs> I'm only like 12, 15 pages in, but the book, the title has something to do with 369 because everything he did was divisible by three. And that was like yes. his secret formula, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, just knowing that he was able to get into that certain state of manifestation in his mind, like believing what was to be, and of course, it became. So the super, super conscious, is it having a, a fight, if you will, with, with our subconscious? Are they kind of battling every once in a while because the super conscious wants to protect us? It's the GPS, it's all there, but the subconscious also wants to do some protection, but it's also running on an old program. Uh, you know, call it from your childhood. You know, everything, that's a really good question, Steve. Uh, everything that I've been reading lately tells is stating that the conscious, the subconscious, and the superconscious actually all work in tandem together. It is our, what's the word I want to look, I want to say, it's, uh, it's our reluctancy mm. to allow ourselves to be limitless with our thoughts. It's that, oh, I can't do that. I'm just, you know, I'm just me. I'm just a, you know, uh, I'm just a housewife or, you know, I'm just a, a guy that, you know, welds stuff all day. And it, I think that it, from everything that I'm reading and getting out of what I'm diving into even more is it's just our own limitations. So if we can learn how to dive deeper into our meditation and into our true inner child and go into that limitless thought and limitless thinking to bring the things to us, I believe our subconscious, super subconscious, our super conscious will start igniting in. And one thing that you said, which I always, which I thought was interesting too, is about Nicholas Tesla and the pigeons being his friends. Now, I did read an, uh, an excerpt from a book at one point, and um, they always say that, you know, you're, the, you, you know, you, you are the, the, the... The sum of the five people the you spend the mo of, most time thank with. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And they influence you, and if they are not on that super conscious level with you, it's hard to have conversations. Albert Einstein had the same thing. Basic mm. conversation with him, I've read, was very hard because he he was so far ahead of us of the rig. But the pigeons didn't have it, didn't have anything. <laughs> That's what I take from that. So those are just the things that I take from things like that. I'm I'm feeling I'm on your page, and and now I see it. You know, <laughs> we we think it's a little quirky that uh, the scientist is uh, hanging out with pigeons every day and and treating them like like his kids, you know, making sure they're fed and taken care of and all of that. Nothing wrong with that, but maybe, nope. maybe it is because nobody could relate to him because he was so mm -hmm. deep into this stuff that he just felt so isolated. But, you know, we are, we are creatures of, um, we're social creatures. So he had to have some kind of connection. Wow. Um, wow. Interesting. Uh, when we talk about the subconscious, and you, you said they're, they're, they're 
they're working together. Are they playing nice together, if you will? You know, or, or, because I would think, <laughs> you know, the subconscious is not really supporting us in, in a, uh, you know, uh, the best way possible. Well, I agree with you on that. Um, because our subconscious mind basically can influence and even control how we feel about a thought. So if our subconscious has been trained to have a certain reaction or a certain feeling on a outcome of something because that is what has been learned over time, yes, the subconscious can kind of fight with our conscious a little bit, especially when we're trying to change a thought or change how we react to something or we, we want to change the outcome of something. I mean, in my life, they, they still conflict. And it's, it's a daily practice of trying to train my subconscious to feel, well, it's actually my conscious teaching my subconscious to feel the way I want them to feel about an outcome instead of the negative, I want it to feel the positive. And we kind of talked about that a little bit um, last week. You know, the negative thoughts are the easy ones. The negative thoughts come flowing like, you know, sand. It's a positive thought, so we have to dig up, hold on to, and grip on with every inch of our life to keep on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, so, yeah, I, I'm I surprised they, you just said that. Come. You just said that because we got instant feedback, instantfeedbacksteve at gmail.com. Melissa is in Ocala, Florida, and she says, great conversation today. I'm learning about manifesting. How can I believe the dreams or desires that I have? So I think it's I think she's right in line with what you're saying there. How to how to believe your stuff, <laughs> you know, because it's it's not yeah. it's I, I'm I'm very cautious when I say this, but because it's not real, it is in in some regards in your mind, and and some of us believe that it's right out there at your fingertips. It just hasn't come to you, or you haven't drawn it to you. But how do you keep that um, that belief system going for what you want? <laughs> That's that's the that's the part that we have that we have to work at on a on a daily basis, and I have to work on it every day also. And it is doing getting into your meditation and your or your prayer, whatever you want to call it, um, and feeling the actual joy and triumph and giddiness, whatever you want to call the word of. Being in that situation, um, like for instance, if you're wanting to um, manifest a new house and it's you just feel it's out of your reach, get a picture of that house, get a picture of the insides, and look at those pictures and feel the joy of mm. you know waking your kids up in the morning and walking them down the hallway and fixing breakfast for them in the morning or going out in the backyard and maybe swimming in that swimming pool or having a party and in your meditation feel that joy that constant joy and happiness of maybe it's just the togetherness with your friends and family and being able to maybe you know just even hosting parties is what you really want to do because that fulfills you inside and gives you your joy. That's what you need to hold on to is the feelings of it. Mm. That is what solidifies it. Interesting. I, um, I get what you're saying in, in, you know, in terms of the, the home I'm in between houses now and just the market's not right in this area. And it's just, I had an offer and it didn't make sense. So I pulled it back so no, I'm just kind of, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. But when I see a house that resonates with me uh, or just think about it, it's like, I don't have a doubt that I'm going to be uh, in the house of my dreams. I, I just, I, I know it's happening. However, I don't do what you're saying enough. I just, I believe it, but I don't feel it enough. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And I mean, I'm... I'm the same way on certain things. Life gets in the way and I get distracted, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
but when I don't get distracted, it's amazing what you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, totally. And and I guess I believe it so much that it's like, well, I don't, don't even know if I have to, can, you know, I, I take the next step, but I really do. You know, we need to for all of us for for manifesting to work as uh, as many say that it that it does um, that I guess it's the belief thing to to get to that yeah. point. And even even with the, you know, the, the person that wrote in believing your stuff, believing your stuff. We yeah. just, is that the hardest part? It, it really is. Um, again, we are such tangible beings, and if it's not, you can't touch it, feel it, see it, it's, it's hard to, to put our minds there. We weren't trained to do that. Like we've talked a couple times, yeah. you know, we're trained to work hard to get what we want instead of feeling it, being in it, and it happens. And it's just a foreign, it's a foreign thing for us, unfortunately. Yeah, because we weren't tra- taught that way. And uh, No. <laughs> right? But the only things we believe is the stuff that we see, you mm-hmm. know, and, and the rest of it just doesn't seem real. So then it, it, we just kind of discard it at that point. Right. Yeah, I, it, that is exactly what it is. And, you know, and, and, and I've been reading some other um, books. I, obviously, I read a lot, but um, I've been reading some other books, and other people believe that it isn't actually not here. It's in just a different, or like a realm, yeah. I guess, of yep. thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it actually is here, and it is tangible. We are just in this box that we've put ourselves in. Society has put us in. Our families put us in. And once we can pull ourselves out of that box, yep, we can come into that realm. I'm still reading the book. I'm not all the way done with it, but it's very interesting to me. That is what you're describing my belief in that. And the more I hear about it, uh, and there's, oh, who, um, oh, I can't think of the, somebody told me that Tony Robbins is another, another, um, individual that believes that it is what what you want is here and it's at the your fingertips like you just reach out there it is it's right there um maybe it's in another realm whatever you want to call it but it's right there but we need to attract it to us and by believing that it's there that's how it comes to you Mm -hmm. yep i Mm. yeah i've read i thought was it a cd or something i've heard of him talk about that before also i like tony robbins he's a good guy yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, he's huge. I haven't really, I haven't really studied him a lot. I've never gone to any of his events, events or any of that. Uh, somebody who uh, believes in manifestation told me that that that's what she learned from going to to one of his seminars. Um, what are we missing? Is there anything that 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 we should share when it comes to manifesting? Whether it you know be the vision board, the journal, are both important? Do you need to do both? Is one more important than the other? You know, I. It just depends on the individual. I've know um, I've got uh, a client right now that the, she's not a journaler. She doesn't want to sit down and do that. She wants to try and do it through meditation and basically just looking at her board and feeling the feelings of just looking at the pictures. And so, you know, again, I let my clients take the steps that they they feel they're being moved to do. Um, but I, but the ones that do the vision boards with the journaling into it, get good, get quick and good results on a continual basis. Mm. And as they go deeper into their journaling and start, you know, the, their meditation and, you know, doing all the practices, that's when all of it again comes together. So it's a, it's a full circle. You can do bits and pieces of it. I just, you know, there's no guarantee on how it's going to come about. It's just a learning process for everybody. Hmm. Um, You said meditating, I believe, on it. Did I hear that right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, uh, because I do that when I'm doing my journaling. It is a, um, I'll do my journaling. And then I usually do it at night um, when I crawl in bed. That's usually when I do my, most of my journaling. And then um, I have a uh, 40 hertz uh, 
meditation that I go to sleep to at night, and it's a medi- it's a manifesting frequency. Oh wow! So oh. I listen to that, and I go into my deep meditation. Well, as deep as I've been able to get, I'm still a a, a student of it. Um, but then I go in, and I, everything that I journaled is when I go in, and that's when I really start going into my inner child of limitless opportunities and imagination, and that's where I go in and start feeling all of those deep feelings of it's already here, I already have it, and I'm actually, like, you know, with my business, it's, you know, I have, you know, all these clients that I'm working with, and I have this client that's doing this, and I'm so excited for her, and then I have this other client, she's doing this, and I'm so excited for her, and we've made these goals, and I actually... That's what I think about when I go to bed at night and to, when I'm meditating. Wow. Okay, so I, I, I wasn't aware that the manifesting also connects to meditating, uh, but that gets you yep. into that state of further believing that it is here or it's coming your way. Uh, and I love what you said before about the child in us, because yes. when you're a kid, anything is possible. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I cheat. Yes, I cheat because I have a four-year-old granddaughter. Uh. And all the books that I've read, you have until the age of six. And then that inner child is crushed. <laughs> so I live vicariously through my four-year-old granddaughter that thinks anything is possible. And I play with that every day, all day. And I go into that with her as much as I possibly can. Well, like we said, because I want her to be able to hold on to that. We're, like we said, you're the sum of the people you spend the most time with. So spend a lot more time with her. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> that's that's the one of the best qualities to have. And I, I, I believe uh, I'm still a kid. I still act like a kid in many ways. I'm responsible, but also you know I'm a kid having fun. Uh, and my best friend yeah. is is the same way. Like, if I told you how old we are, you'd be like, well, are you kidding? The stuff that we do, because that's that's the way we think. But if you can remain curious, and that's the kid in us, you're halfway to, I think, happiness. Just always be wondering, how does that work? How does that, you know, let me try that. Let me try this. Um, there's something to be said about about the... Uh, the child thing there. Wow. Uh, we went in a lot of different directions today, but all impactful, right down to pigeons. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never know. Um, Ronnie, how do we, how do we find you and get your guidance to, uh, to do all of this? Cause there's, I, I truly believe coached properly. You can make it happen. Be, you know, you can read, you can listen yeah. to podcasts, but having somebody hold your hand through it and, and, Really show you, okay, this is what the vision board should look like. This is the detail it needs. Same thing with um, you know, your journaling and all of that. How do we find you? You can find me um, on my website, and that is growingfromwithinllc.com. Um, you have my phone number and everything's on there. And then you can also find me on Facebook at Ronnie, R-O-N-I, Holney, H-U-L-N-E. And you can find me on there. And then I do have a Facebook group that is 100% vision boards, journaling, and making it all happen. Fantastic. I don't know anybody that takes manifestation to the level that you do. And I've talked about it before with others. And yeah, you skim the surface and the principles and everything, but you really dive deep into it. And uh, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you being with us today. Absolutely. I appreciate the time, Steve. Always love our conversation. Yep. We'll talk soon. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just got to hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. (laughs) No, you hold my hand. Here we go. (laughs) Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. (sighs) Hey. 
Hey. <laughs> hey, we're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to start a band. <laughs> I got it. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. <laughs> Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council.